All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining today's webinar, Cash Flow Forecasting Just Got Started. So in this webinar today, we're going to explore in depth how Fathom Forecasting can give you the tools to make more informed business decisions, understand your current and future cash, cash position, and plan for different business scenarios. So just as a heads up, this webinar is tailored for small to medium sized businesses. If you are interested in an accountant's look at forecasting and how you can use this to advise your clients, um, please feel free to join us for our session, which is scheduled tomorrow, and it's going to be dedicated for accountants and advisors. Thanks, James. We have an awesome session to plan for the next 45 minutes, but before we get into it, we'd like to quickly introduce ourselves. My name is Jess Miller. I'm on the customer engagement team here at Fathom, located in our Brisbane office. My role is to help our new business users get the training and resources that they need to get set up for success. Now, whether that sounds like you or not, please feel free to take down my email. I'd love to hear from you if you have any questions or comments about the session. I'm also joined here by my teammate, James. Thanks, Jess. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here. Um, my name is James Lin. I'm a business development manager here at Fathom. Been with the team for over two years now and working closely with all kinds of accountants, um, advisors, businesses, to help them streamline their, their reporting and advisory workflows. Beautiful. Now here's our agenda for today. We'll start by giving just a little bit of background on who we are and what we do here at Fathom. Uh, then we'll dive into forecasting, why it's so necessary, some of the main pain points, and also take a look at the solutions. Uh, we'll also be jumping in and out of the Fathom product itself to show you some best practice tips on how our tool is used. The webinar will include a Q&A session at the end, so please feel free to ask any questions through the Zoom Q&A feature. We're hoping that by the end of the session, you'll know how Fathom will help you gain insight into the direction of your business and use that information to make informed business decisions and plan for the future. So just a bit of background for those of you who are quite new to Fathom. We are basically a management reporting and advisory solution for businesses and accountants with automated reporting, consolidations, and business analytics. And just recently, we've released our new cash flow forecasting feature, which is uh, what we're really going to be diving into today. So we were established in 2010 in Brisbane, and we've now expanded to a global team around the world with offices in the US, the UK, and also the Philippines as well. And we also work with over 40,000 organizations across the world, ranging from small businesses all the way to top 100 firms. Awesome. So let's jump into some forecasting basics. Uh, you may be familiar with this term three-way forecasting, but what is a three-way forecast? This simply means that your forecast is backed by your three financial statements, your profit and loss, your balance sheet, and your cash flow. There are two main methods of forecasting, direct and indirect. Now the direct method uh, will use transactional data to pinpoint the specific date that cash will be coming in and out of your business. Adam's forecasting tool uses the other method, which is the indirect method. Um, now this uses your prior period actuals to predict a longer term cash flow. Uh, by using data that's already been recorded in your source accounting system, you have all the information needed to put together your cash flow statement. Uh, this method is widely used amongst businesses because it's simpler and it's also particularly useful if your business has a high volume of transactions. So as part of developing this tool, um, we have done a lot of research and asked a lot of people um, and gained a lot of feedback from different types of people on how they felt about the forecasting environment, the struggles that they were facing and what they'd like to see more of in the market. So you can see some really big numbers on the screen there. We've done 78 interviews, over 200 survey participants um, and over 800 support interactions as well with business owners, CFOs, accountants from different industries and across a range of different sized businesses. So some really notable feedback that we received from, from those uh, interactions, are we, we forecast to be intentional about how we run our business and inform strategy. We make a plan and measure how we performed against it. And forecasting gives us peace of mind and guidance to make important decisions. So we realized from this that forecasts are absolutely integral for a lot of these businesses to be able to make those informed decisions going into the future. Awesome. We also noticed that there were some shared pain points across forecast creation. If you've created a forecast before, you might recognize some of these. 
So the first one here is that forecast creation can often be too time consuming. So oftentimes the process includes manual data input, input which is prone to human error. Uh, one of the main complaints we heard was that the time spent creating the forecast wasn't actually reflected in the value that was delivered. So if you're on a smaller team or at a smaller business, your day-to-day -day probably encompasses many roles. Um, your time's important. If you're a CFO at a larger business, um, it might be really important that you're um, showing that your value is being delivered there. Um, now, our next pain point is that um, oftentimes our relevancy declines quickly and our forecast methods aren't flexible. So you spent this time creating a really accurate forecast only to repeat the process uh, a few months down the line. Uh, from our survey participants, we found that 50% of our users were actually revising their three-way forecast um, one to three months um, into the future after creation, and also that 28% of our business users are updating their forecast every single week. So the next pain point that we have is that it's hard to decipher. So with forecasts, you know, there's so many numbers coming from so many different places. They each have their own unique calculations. So it can be really hard to revise your figures and understand where those numbers are coming from. And then that reduces your overall confidence in the forecast itself. And finally, it can be really difficult to communicate forecasted figures. Typically we see that in a business, the person who's worked on the forecast, they know it inside and out, but then they'll need to communicate it with other decision makers, with other people, um, other stakeholders who might not be com completely familiar with how those numbers have been derived or with those financial and accounting concepts. Awesome. All right, so now that we've discussed some of the common forecast frustrations, let's jump into the product itself and I'll show you how quickly we can get started. So I'll jump into a brand new forecast here. Now you'll see that I can get started um, and I'm actually welcomed with a few different methods to get started. Now, this first one is we can link our forecast to an existing budget. Um, now, this is a great option if you've really spent a lot of time creating a budget and you feel that it reflects accurately for the future. Um, you can then go in and leverage some of Fathom's other business tools um, and have a play around with planning for the future based on that forecast. Our middle option here is our quick start forecast. Um, and this is actually the easiest way to get started. Um, it's particularly great if you're really looking for that time-saving tool and would like to jump in immediately. Now, I'd also recommend this option if you're brand new to the forecast creation as well. Um, so this method will take the data from your source accounting system, um, and it will then apply a linear regression or a line of best fit over your prior period actuals um, in order to predict the future. Now, this third option is actually a custom forecast, and it's a four-step process which allows you to get quite specific over your figures. So um, if you have a current method of forecast you're quite comfortable with, um, or you're familiar to the forecast creation process, um, I'd probably recommend this option for that ultimate control. Um, this option will take just a few extra minutes to get started, um, but it is a great way that you can really kind of gain that ultimate um, forecast control there. For now, I'll jump into this quick start option and I'll show you how simple it really is to get started. Now you'll see it takes just about a minute. Um, I'm immediately welcomed by these onboarding videos, so I can definitely kind of take a glance through those and get an overview of the tool. Um, but I can also see that Fathom's done a lot of the heavy lifting for me. So I'm in my main grid, I can see my forecasted figures, um, and I'll jump into how these were created um, in just a moment. Um, now I'll pass it back over to James and he'll just go over the forecasting life cycle. Thanks, Jess. So just to navigate a little bit um, on that main grid screen that we were seeing in the demo. So I wanted to talk a little bit about a five-step forecasting life cycle that you go through when creating a forecast for your business in Fathom. So these five steps, you can see them there. They are baseline, plan, explore, report, and monitor. So we'll have a look at our first one to start with, which is baseline. So what will happen if my business continues on its current course? So that's really the first step of creating a good forecast. If I continue on this path, what is my business going to look like in the future? And that's what we'll cover on now. Beautiful, it's quite an important point you've made there, James. Um, so I'll actually move into a forecast I'm a little bit more familiar with um, and that there is a little bit of setup behind. Um, I've also created this forecast using our smart prediction method as well. Um, so I'm back into my main grid and you can see that this is where my profit and loss sits. 
So I can see my related uh, revenue, cost of sales and expense accounts here. Um, now we also have this balance sheet tab at the top and this is where my cash um, and asset accounts sit. Um, the next tabs are drivers tab, which is a really valuable tool for businesses that want to incorporate units into their forecast. So for example, I can build out drivers for employees, products, um, maybe some hours that have been completed each month. Now these drivers will allow you to build it into a formula um, using non-financial or unit-based unit metrics. So you can most accurately calculate your, um, your expected performance. So I'll show you guys an example of how we can use drivers um, in just a few moments. Now this final tab is our cash flow tab and it's really why we take a look at those other two statements. Um, it's the output of the forecast here. Um, so something that might be um, particularly interested, uh, interesting to our business users um, is this cash and cash equivalents tab that we have here at the bottom. Um, now this is the balance we'd expect in our bank account if we hit our forecast numbers and if our business performs as expected. Now I'll jump back into the profit and loss tab here. Um, and you'll notice we actually have this gray line. Now this delineates our prior period actuals. So I can quickly refer to um, up to 12 uh, months prior of our actual results, um, or I can scroll forward and see my forecasted figures up to three years um, or 36 months into the future here. Now I can also see the method of uh, calculation for my forecasted lines here. So I can actually click to drill down and get just a bit of uh, information here. So immediately jumping out at me, I have this great um, forecasted line. I can clearly see my actuals in the solid um, as well as my forecasted line in my dash. Um, so this is a really great way we can get some confidence over our forecast, maybe spot any anomalies um, and really see the direction of the business here. Uh, now I can see that this commission's uh, line here is actually being calculated by smart prediction, um, but maybe I'd like to change that. I can actually go in and either edit the existing rule um, or create a brand new rule. Um, so we have lots of uh, ways we can get started here. Um, if we don't want to use smart prediction, we could link to a previous period um, and add an optional increase or decrease. Uh, we could use a constant or growing figure. Um, we could get quite specific and tell Fathom exactly how I'd like this line to be calculated by using a custom formula and incorporate some of those unit-based drivers. Um, or again, if I feel quite confident with my budget, I can link my figures back as well. Uh, now you might also be noticing we do have this um, availability to add in some assumption notes. So I can easily track um, not only the changes I've made, but if I'm working on this forecast with a team, um, I could note down who's made these changes as well. Um, another great use case is if you do have some external data that you'd like to link into the forecast, um, you could easily add in a Google Drive link, for example, um, and connect some external data there. Um, awesome. For now, I'll use our constant and growing figure, and I'll just show you guys um, how quick and easy this forecast can change. So I can key in an initial figure, um, maybe add a small increase here. Um, and once I hit create, um, you'll see that actually the forecast spins in real time here. Um, so it is really live and dynamic. Um, and as soon as you do create a new rule, um, you'll see it reflects over to the forecast grid. Um, now, the last option we have here is actually these timing profiles. Um, and you'll see that by default, they're actually set to immediate um, or 100%. Um, so that basically means that, um, or that's basically telling Fathom how we're expecting this line to time down to the balance sheet. Um, so if we're expecting um, all of our cash to be either paid or uh, received in the same month, we leave this on 100%. Um, maybe your business doesn't operate that way. You can also jump in and change to reflect things accurately. Um, so that's really how we can see where our business is headed. Um, if we maintain our current course, uh, I'll pass over to James and we can see how we can plan ahead a little bit more. Um, thanks, Jess. So so after we've created that baseline forecast, um, we can start modeling out those potential plans or projects that we're looking to run into the future. So maybe we have some marketing campaigns that we're looking to run. Maybe we want to hire some employees or even take out a loan. So we can actually model these events in Fathom using our micro forecasts and also our business roadmap. And that'll help you plan out those events. And so you can see those financial impacts on your forecasted numbers. Awesome. 
Now, you might have noticed that I do have a few different uh, business events that I've layered onto this line here. Um, so these ones we call our micro forecasts, as James mentioned, and that's really a self-contained set of profit and loss and balance sheet movements that I've then layered onto this forecast baseline. Uh, I can also get a visual view over my micro forecasts here. Um, so I can see I have a few different event types, things like our new hires, um, some asset purchases. Maybe I'm looking to implement a new marketing campaign and hoping to win a contract here. Um, maybe my business is currently experiencing a period of growth. Um, and I'd like to add some extra manpower, I can actually jump in and create a micro forecast. So maybe I'm looking to hire a new consultant. Um, I can categorize them just to stay organized and also give this employee a start date. Um, now, when I hit create, um, you'll see I have a few options to get started here. Now I can start from scratch and add in the accounts that are relevant, um, or I can use kind of Fathom's handy wizards here now, these are just a quicker way to get started. It'll bring you through a simple workflow um, for these expected business actions here. Um, so I'll choose this hire an employee option to get started. Um, and you'll see I have this really simple um, way I can provide some extra details. So this employee is full time. Um, I can link them back to an expected salary um, and I can connect them to an expense account here as well. Now, when I select next, um, you'll see I have some options for um, tax settings. So I've already done this setup and Fathom can read that automatically. Um, so I can give it a glance over um, and just check that things are squared away before proceeding on. So when I add this to my micro forecast, you can see that once again, Fathom's done a lot of that heavy lifting for me. So I've easily tracked all of the outgoings for this employee here. Um, now, hopefully if this consultant's any good, um, they're also going to be bringing me in some money so I can also add in here an income account as well. Um, so likely we have a good idea of how this employee is going to perform. So when I'm adding in this, in, this income line, uh, maybe I'd like to get quite specific and use a formula. So I've already built out some drivers for this employee. Um, I probably have a great idea of how many billable hours they're working each month. Um, and I probably have a good idea of how much um, they'll be able to charge as well here. So a really simple formula, timesing their billable hours by their billable rate. Um, when I create the rule, you'll see that once again, it spins in real time. Um, and I can see that hopefully my employee is going to be profitable around that September mark. Now, there is a more visual way that we can see our micro forecasts, and that's actually on this business roadmap. Um, so I can clearly see the different timings of these business events in a more visual way. Um, and I also have all of these uh, micro forecasts listed out on the side here. Now, one of the most valuable things our business users have found is actually this pinned metrics bar at the bottom. Um, you may have noticed this in some of the other screens. Now, what I can do is select some metrics that are the most relevant for my business here, um, and also set a critical threshold level for them here, um, or a level that I don't feel comfortable reaching. So um, for example, here I'm seeing I've reached my threshold level quite a bit in my change in cash. I'm noticing quite a bit of red here. Um, so what I can do is actually jump in and show a more visual impact here. Um, now I can start playing around with the timing of these events and see how we can um, hopefully improve this metric um, and get us back above our threshold level. Um, so maybe it makes sense to delay the timing of this truck purchase. Um, and what I'm really looking to do here is get rid of some of those red areas um, and just smooth out some of those edges there as well. Great. So maybe I'm happier with the timing of this truck purchase in May. Um, and maybe I can also now delay this timing of my new truck driver hire as well there. Um, now, hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of some of the dynamic areas um, of Fathom and how we can really plan ahead with our forecast. Um, I'll jump back over to James and we can go over the next step. Thanks, Jess. Uh, I really love that business roadmap tool where you can visually see all of your different plans going forward. Um, Absolutely. So the next stage of the forecast lifecycle that we have here is explore. After you've created the baseline forecast, you've set some potential plans that you'd like to run going forward. You can then explore those different strategies at different times. What you can do is mix and match micro forecasts to see which combinations and timings is going to give you the best return. And you can also, uh, you can also see, um, you can also explore potential best case or worst case scenarios that might occur in the future. Um, which is especially important nowadays because of so much uncertainty for businesses. Absolutely. 
Yeah, as James mentioned, you can do some scenario planning here. Um, so it's a great way that you can add a configuration onto your baseline um, and also tie in some of those business events that you're planning to do. Um, so you can see I already have a best case scenario planned out. So let's actually jump in and create a worst case scenario. So maybe in my worst case scenario, um, I have a pretty big um, decrease in my revenue here. Um, so maybe a 10% decrease. Maybe I also experience a little bit of an increase in my expenses. So now I can go in and really think about which of these micro forecast events um, I can now proceed with, you know, given this climate. Um, so maybe I can no longer purchase this truck. Um, maybe it doesn't make sense for me to hire that truck driver. Um, and maybe I can't afford this consultant either. Um, maybe I've also gone in and actually lost this contract. So these are some of the events that we can, you know, then tie in or not tie in um, based on which scenario we're having. Uh, when I hit create, uh, you'll see that it automatically will tie into this business roadmap here. Um, it will also filter on top of my main forecast grid. So I can really easily toggle between my different scenarios, my best and my worst case, um, or I can go back to that main forecast grid for a really easy comparison here. So it's a great way we can plan ahead um, and really get a kind of visual impact of where our business potentially could be heading there. All right, I'll pass it back over to James. Awesome. So the next step of the business life cycle there is report. So how can I convey the forecast to other decision makers and collaborators? So if you recall, one of the key pain points that we uncovered um, is that forecasts are typically hard to communicate with others. Um, so we really tried to make Fathom's forecasting fully integrated with our existing reporting features to make this a lot easier for you to communicate with other stakeholders. Awesome. And there is a few ways we can do that. Um, now, one of them is actually through this um, download option here. And what this will do is download our forecast into Excel. Um, so it'll have three tabs for the profit and loss, the balance sheet, and the cash flow. Um, but oftentimes, what we found is our business users prefer a more visual look at the forecast. Um, and that can really be done in the reporting section. Now, if you're brand new to Fathom Reports, um, and this is your first look, I'll quickly just outline this reporting center here. Um, now, reports can go to two places. They can either go to draft, um, which means it's a work in progress. Um, and basically, anyone who has the permission to edit and change the reports can view this. Um, or it can be sent to published. Um, so once it's a finalized product, anyone who just has permission to view the reports will be able to pop in here um, and view that report. Now, uh, if you're really not sure where to get started, I'd recommend jumping into the predefined section. Um, so these ones have some setup that's done for you, but they're still fully customizable. So it just gives you a great place to jump off from. Um, for today, I'll jump into the draft section um, and I'll go in and edit one of these reports that I've already done a little bit of setup for. Awesome. So immediately jumping out at me is this business roadmap visual. Um, and I can clearly see some of those timings of these events, as well as that shifted timing for these truck purchase and truck driver hires here. Um, I've also added in a projection chart. Um, so I can clearly see my actuals, the current periods highlighted, and I can see my forecasted figures into the future as well. Um, I can also go in and edit. Um, so maybe I want a little bit of extra detail on this forecast here. I can pop into my month view um, and get a great breakdown. I can also change things here like our date range um, and I can download this report to Excel as well. So if I do want to do a little bit of additional analysis outside of the platform, um, I can easily do that. Um, now, my next chart here is some revenue scenarios. I can clearly see my revenue on my main forecast case um, as well as my best case. Um, of course, I can jump in and again, edit things further. So by accessing the advanced settings, um, I can actually choose which of my forecast scenarios um, this line is showing. So maybe I also want to compare my worst case. Um, I can really clearly see here, you know, the different um, areas we could end up with at the end of the financial year. Now, my last forecasting report is my assumptions chart. So this is a great way we can track any of those changes that we've made. Um, for example, I can see that I'm expecting my consulting fees to decrease with the hire of our in-house accountant. Um, you can see I've linked in a finalized contract here, um, and I've actually tracked who's been making these changes. So I've been jumping in um, and making some of these rule changes as well. 
Uh, now, last, I've added some revenue analysis, um, and this is really just to show that you can actually report on your actuals right alongside the forecast. So you can make an all-in-one management or performance report um, that can then be sent off to your investors, your board, um, or maybe even just your team. Um, so that kind of rounds out that reporting center. Um, I'll show you guys in just a moment how we can continue on with the reports and monitor, but first I'll pass it over to James. Awesome, thanks Jess. And that brings us to the last stage of our forecasting life cycle, which is monitor. So how do I keep my forecast relevant for decision-making throughout the year? Um, so with all this work that you're putting into the forecast, you, you obviously want to make sure that the forecast is staying up to date. It's going to be relevant and not become obsolete as the months go by. So because uh, all of your data is coming over live from your source accounting system with that, with that integration that we have, um, the forecast is actually going to dynamically update with the actual data flowing through. Then you can simply monitor the forecast going forward, just making sure that it's staying relevant. So Jess is going to jump back into Fathom the final time and show you how you can automate the flow of data into your reports and monitor your figures with ease through there. Awesome. Yeah, so exactly right. Your data is live. It's coming over from your source accounting system, whether that's zero QuickBooks or MYOB. Um, so really that portion of things is kind of taken for you by Fathom's integration systems. Um, if you have done this setup for a, re a forecasting report and you want to monitor things going forward, um, you can actually put them on a schedule um, and really automate that process. So by creating a schedule for your report, um, you can tell Fathom exactly uh, when you like it to be created. Um, so maybe in this case, it's a monthly forecast. Um, I can notify my users once the report's been created and just get a reminder to jump back in and, and check on my forecast. Um, once I create that schedule, and select play, you'll see my forecast, um, my forecast report is active. It's going to be issued on the 7th of February and it's going to be generated um, on that monthly basis. So it's a great way that we can jump in and monitor what's happening with our forecast and with our business um, into the future where I really don't have to touch a thing. Um, that kind of summarizes the demo portion of this uh, session. Um, I'll hand it back over to James just so we can give you a little bit more information um, on you know, the next steps and who you can get in touch with. Awesome, thanks so much, Jess. It was a really good deep dive into the Fathom product and how it ties in with the forecasting life cycle that we really see for, for Fathom forecasting. So hopefully you guys have learned you know, how you can optimize Fathom to gain those insights into the direction of your business and use that information to plan for the future and be able to make those informed decisions. Um, if you do want to learn a little bit more about Fathom, I'd highly recommend signing up for a free trial. We've got a 14 day free Fathom trial that you can sign up for. It's fully functional. There's no billing information or credit card required. So you can just put your email address in and then directly jump into creating your own forecast there. Um, if you have any questions or any feedback at all, definitely get in touch with us. We've got Jessica's email address there, so you can reach out to us for anything whatsoever. Now we'll stay on for a little bit of a Q&A session here. So please feel free to ask any questions through that Q&A Zoom feature. Um, it should be located at the top of your screen there. Awesome. Um, so we have some questions coming through, which is fantastic. Um, Got some people asking if we can send the link for tomorrow's session. We'll definitely send that through together with the webinar recording of, of this session here. So no worries, we'll, we'll definitely send that through uh, via email. Um, another question here, can you also include a separate budget together with the forecast? So yeah. Jess, do you wanna to touch on that one a little bit? Absolutely, yeah, it's a great question there. Um, so we can kind of incorporate a budget as well into Fathom. Um, it'll actually be located in the settings section. So just jumping into that one at the top here. Um, now you'll see that you're immediately brought into this section where we can manage our budgets. Um, it's step one. Um, and you'll see a few different things here. Um, for this company, I have my budget coming over from Excel. Uh, now it could also come from your source accounting system, whether that's zero QuickBooks or MYOB. Um, alternatively, if I want to combine my forecasts and my budget together, I actually do have this option um, to link the two. So it's really up to you. Um, they can be separated in Fathom um, with a separate budget and forecast, or we can combine them together um, and report on those, um, not only in the report section, but also in some of the analysis tools too. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's all kind of integrated together. So all of the different 
um, sections of Fathom all speak to each other. So you can use the forecast or the budget in any of the different areas. Absolutely. Um, I've got a question here. I have multiple entities that I'd like to forecast. Do you support this? Yeah, awesome question. Um, so we can actually uh, forecast for a group in two different ways. Um, if you have some underlying forecasts that you've made, maybe you've made them for each of your companies, um, you could use this link, um, link to forecast option. Um, Fathom's consolidation feature actually will roll up your budget um, and you'll be able to get started that way. Uh, alternatively, you can actually create a forecast at the group level as well. Um, so you'll see I do have that kind of forecasting feature here. So definitely two available options for you. you can either build it out at the group level um, or use your underlying forecasts and roll those up together. Yep, awesome. Um, another question here. Can you give us an example of a driver and maybe show the driver functionality a little bit? Yeah, definitely. And that's one I didn't kind of jump into in too much depth. Um, so I'll jump back into the forecast section here. And just at the top here, again, we have kind of that driver section. Um, now, I do have this option to create a driver here. Um, so it's as long as it's unit based, we can pretty much import it. But maybe I'm looking to um, build out that consultant a little bit more, and I'd like to link them back to some training costs. Um, again, I can categorize it. So maybe in this case, it's an employee driver. Um, and it's just going to give me one of those lines to then jump in and create a value rule. Um, so we probably have a pretty good idea of how much our training is going to cost. Um, so maybe it's 500 a month. I can easily kind of create the rule. Um, you'll see it spins in real time. Uh, then when I build out kind of my formulas, I can incorporate this training costs metric into a driver as well. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, drivers are really useful to, to um, incorporate external data. And if you wanted to generate formulas and things like that, um, really, really useful for that purpose. Absolutely. Um, got a question coming in. How much does forecasting cost? Is it, is it an extra, extra cost for that feature? Oh yeah, good question as well. Um, if you're familiar with Fathom, um, you probably know that we've kind of more typically had the analysis and reporting features. Um, and we've just kind of moved into that forecast space. Um, it is all wrapped up into the one fathom price. Um, so you're not paying any additional for that feature. Yep, absolutely. Awesome. Um, and we'll maybe just do one more question. We'll definitely get to everybody's question. Um, if, we, we, if we don't get to your question today on the live, on the live chat, um, what we'll do is we'll send an email out and make sure to, to respond to your question there. But we'll just do one more. Um, a question from Rob, can you have multiple forecast versions? Um, Jess, do you want to tackle that? I think you could probably achieve that using the scenarios. What do you think? I think so too. Yeah, so it is kind of a good way you can save different versions of your forecast. Um, it is kind of that configuration onto the baseline and you can roll up those um, underlying events as well on top. Um, it's a great way that you can kind of plan for different scenarios and plan for different forecasts. Um, and then, of course, you can report on those different ones as well. I'd say scenario is probably the best way to achieve that one. Yep, definitely. All righty. Um, so again, we'll, we'll definitely touch on everybody's question. We'll send that directly to you. Um, but otherwise, that does conclude today's webinar session. So I really appreciate all of you taking the time out of your day to join us and hope that was an interesting and, and valuable session for you. Again, if you do want to give this a try, you can certainly... Um, jump onto our website and sign up for your own free trial. So it's, you'd be able to create your own forecasts and your own reports and see how everything goes. Um, otherwise, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and, and thanks again for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day. All righty. See you soon. Bye.